Okay. Uh, am, am I heard? Okay. Good. Also good. So, uh, yeah, I think we can start. Uh, so we won't be too long because this is, I think, the last set of sessions. So uh, you probably have plans after 6 p.m. Uh, so, yeah, uh, today's talks will be about how uh, to onboard the next generation of Drupal engineers, or as uh, Dries said today, villagers. Now we're calling them villagers. Uh, so, yeah, this is me. Um, the, the, the photo is not completely new, but I hope I'm, you can recognize me from the picture. Um, I'm a development director at Agile Drop. Uh, it's a development company uh, mainly doing Drupal from Slovenia. Uh, this handle is also my username uh, on Drupal.org and also on social media, med media and it's actually the pronunciation of my name because I know that there's a characters that are not uh, usually in your languages uh, so this is how you actually pronounce my name. Um, the first contact with Drupal was somewhere around 2010 and uh, at that point I was working in an agency uh, on a proprietary CMS and in my free time I was discovering other options and Drupal was one of them and luckily enough the, the, the owner of that agency was also discovering alternatives to the expensive proprietary CMS that we were working on and yeah hopefully I was lucky enough that we were able to start using Drupal at that point and uh, yeah since then I'm uh, in Drupal. Uh, this is Admir. He's not here today, so he's not like a co-speaker or something. Uh, he's just uh, a co-worker of mine uh, that will be that I will use to explain a thing. Um, he joined Agile Drop in July this year. Um, he started working on a Drupal onboarding project that we have internally, so learning Drupal, learning best practices, and he already made first contributions at Drupal.org. Uh, this is Admir's Drupal.org profile. Three months, one week, and you can see that he has 22 fixed issues. I mean, he has credits on 22 fixed issues. So, this is what we'll be talking about. Uh, yeah, I, can, I admit, I admit he's, he's, he's a real talent and uh, I really like him. But yeah, it, um, if we compare the two of us, as I said before, I started, I, I, I learned about Drupal around 2010, uh, but I registered on Drupal.org in 2012 because no one told me that this is actually the place to go. I actually were, was doing Drupal projects for almost a year, but it was, you know, we were learning by, by ourselves. And, uh, uh, and even though I was already making patches for our projects, which of course at that point was Drupal 7, so which meant that we were also, of course, a little bit, uh, well, it was, not, it was not pretty all the time because we were hacking modules as well. Uh, but yeah, my first issue credit was in June 2016. Uh, well, you can see the difference, actually. Um, and what was actually the difference between me and Admir? Well, my path was that I was self-taught. I learned about Drupal on the internet. Um, and of course, my first projects were really a low quality project. If I think uh, most of you can relate that if you could go to back to your first Drupal project that you're not very proud of. Uh, but yeah, we were learning from mistakes, but we were learning from mistakes and those mistakes were haunting us for a year or two or three or even more because uh, well, the projects weren't built in, uh, in the proper way. Um, at that time, I also, with the colleagues attended Drupal events, Drupal camps mostly, to get more information, attended uh, sessions like this one. And after many projects, we were able to apply the best practices into the projects. Um, of course, while I was doing a job for a living, I had to learn the best practices in my free time. And of course, it took me a couple of years to come to a point. Well, Admir's path is different. He, he joined our company, he has a mentor, 
he is able to learn Drupal from experienced developers. Um, he has time to, uh, to, to learn during the job and he also adopts best practices from day one because, well, he's not allowed to do the other way. <laughs> Um, but yeah, this is the difference, and the result was on the previous screen. He he's actually contributing to Drupal modules already. Uh, so what we learned until now is yeah we we need new talent in Drupal. I mean, of course we uh, people are coming and going, and uh, we need to build the next generation of Drupal engineers uh, to maintain Drupal and all the modules in the future. And uh, yeah, the problems that we have today, one problem I see is a step before coming to Drupal is PHP. Uh, PHP might not be the hype of today. Uh, it's hard to attract new developers where, where uh, all the other um, nice and, 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 uh, and sexy things are there out there. And uh, in PHP, there's many old projects with bad code base, which are still kept alive. We know that there's a lots of Drupal 7 sites still out there. It's uh, the end of life is just postponing and postponing. And of course, this is drawing a bad reputation to the language itself, which actually evolved a lot in the last 10 years or so. But because of the uh, old projects, you know, the newcomers, the juniors see a 10 year old and usually those are the guys who get the old projects because, of course, the seniors are working on new projects. Uh, and then, of course, they don't like it and uh, PHP is also um, uh, loses the reputation. Uh, and, of course, I think this myth is as old as, as PHP is, uh, that PHP is that. Of course, we all know that that's not true, at least hopefully here all of you know PHP and know that it's, uh, well, the changes in PHP 8 and, and actually with every new version are really great and it's still running lots and lots of internet. So it's not just going away because it can't. Um, yeah, also the salaries, I think we have to touch this uh, point are lower compared to the niche languages, which Rust, Go, and others. But uh, why is that? I think because on average, the problems the code solves there is of higher value. We have to admit that, you know. Um, learning curve is steeper, which means that the less experienced talent is available, uh, which means, of course, that salaries go up but of course you have to but uh, a 22 year old developer doesn't know that he just read a blog post that rust and go have higher salaries he doesn't know that he would probably need five or ten years of experience to be able to work on a project in those languages so we are the one who have to tell them that maybe start slow uh, and also those languages are usually used in startups, products, and stuff like that, which, we have to be honest, compared to agencies, have usually a bigger value per developer. And also Drupal has some problems. I started with Drupal 7. You know, what we did was not the most beautiful thing, but it was easy. Uh, Drupal 8 plus, we have to be honest, requires more knowledge. If not, uh, it's, if for nothing else, it's object oriented. Uh, the programming standards are higher, the folder structures, because in Drupal 7, you just created the dot module file and just let's go, put everything in there, and you were just writing, writing, writing until, you know. And of course, there's Composer and everything else. So I think that the entry to the technology is harder, as it was in Drupal 7. Uh, and I also believe that it's not that suitable for hobby projects anymore. I think Drupal 7, you know, you were able to download it, put on a server FTP, and you were able to do something. Well, of course, now, if you want to follow best practices, you can't work like that. Because, you know, you have configuration, you have everything else that it has to be uh, done in a proper way. 
And of course, comparing to 10 plus years ago, there's also lots of other solutions, including even frameworks. So not if, even if it's an, uh, if, if a company or a client is in a need of a CMS, at the end of the day, you can also use Laravel. So what is the solution? Um, well, I, but this by accident, I mean by accident, by coincidence, this is a little bit connecting to what Dries was talking before, but agencies have to work on promoting Drupal. You know, we have to teach people how to use it, and it's not enough to just post the job ad and say, well, there's no Drupal engineers out there. Of course it's not. There's no Rust engineers out there. There's no Go engineers out there. There's no engineers out there. You have to learn them. You have to take them on board and take some time and uh, learn them. What, what you have to do is find people who are still exploring. You know, lots of times I hear people from on universities, you know, they learn them usually, at least in our country, universities learn, you know, uh, computer engineers, a, a small portions of, of different, you know, areas and languages, and they have to decide where to go. Well, this is, this is the place where we have to find them and see if there is a prospect, of course, tell them what we're doing and, uh, yeah, tell them in a way that they will like it, impress them. Um, so, yeah, there will be three steps uh, that we are actually doing at Agile Drop and that I want to share with you as well. And, of course, hopefully you will be able to get some results out of it. So first, find people that can become great developers. Uh, to be honest, and I will be honest, we are mainly looking for talented and junior and mid-developers, fast learners. I said before, you know, the, the seniors are looking for other options. There are other opportunities, of course there are. And, uh, and also, if you want to learn a framework or a CMS like Drupal, uh, it's good to start with someone who doesn't have much backstories, you know, to uh, start with fresh. Um, then what all companies can do in their local environment is, of course, organize workshops, organize local meetups, PHP meetup, open source meetup. So it's not necessary to go to and say, we will organize a Drupal meetup. It's, it's a big chance that you won't get as much people as you would like. But go wider, uh, organize a PHP meetup or even open source meetup. This open source world, I think it's, it's, it's quite attractive. And if you, you know, start or start open source workshops or something like that. So this is something that, to attract young developers. Um, and then of course, during those sessions, you, you sneak the Drupal in. Um, yeah, and be, be active in local universities and other educational institutions because uh, that's where you will find the talent. Um, our company is, is uh, I mean, we try to do our best. Of course, other uh, technologies are also there, uh, you know, pressing on universities to learn, especially some, um, I mean, some technologies with uh, more traditional uh, with with uh, with more money, uh, but yeah, every agency can do this locally. And uh, again, we are not into uh, looking for rock stars. To be honest, we're looking for newcomers. We want to find the talent and we want to learn them. Step two: Now you have expertise in your company already. Now it's time to inject the skills directly into their veins. Uh, Agile Drop has a Drupal onboarding project. It's, well, it depends how much time it takes, but usually it takes at least a month, two, maybe even more, which is a dummy Drupal project uh, where they start with site building, custom modules, and during the custom modules, they learn how to build custom entity, how to build custom block, custom controller, everything else, everything else. So, and uh, yeah. You have to mentor them. So you have to uh, make sure that one of uh, your uh, senior guys or, or someone who has been with Drupal quite for some time 
uh, can spend a couple of hours per week probably uh, and you know just review the work they did and be available for possible questions. Um, then of course when they go on the first project, I have to help them. Uh, also maybe teach some soft skills so they become more independent because uh, you know young developers are usually quite shy and afraid because and also uh, scared of doing something wrong. So you have to build a culture where mistakes happen, of course, we try to, uh, um, to avoid repeating that mistakes, but yeah. Um, and then build or take over maintenance of an existing module on Drupal.org. This is what we did with Admir. You know, we are maintaining a couple of modules. There are a couple of, there are lots of modules out there who are not maintained or have 10, 20, 30 uh, re uh, reviewed and tested by the community issues, but no one, Im nobody merges them in. So find those modules, contact the maintainers, and maybe take over the maintainership of some module. You know, this is the way that you can also um, uh, learn them. And step three, which is important, this is not a one-time job. You have to do this all the time, because if you just go and say, okay, we'll organize uh, Drupal workshops and out of 50 people we'll probably find five and then we'll hire them and then those five will work for the next couple of years. doesn't go like that. So uh, you probably have to organize a couple of workshops to find one or two. But yeah, workshops, meetups, sessions in universities, they must be constant. You have to be constantly present on those um, on those, uh, for those events. Um, as I said before, block the time of your seniors to review the work and help. If you know that you have a couple of juniors in your team, you have to make a, you have to find a way to block some time of your seniors and, you know, um, give them an, an opportunity to review the work. Um, build a culture where everyone is encouraged to help. I think the whole Drupal community is built in this way, so we don't have so many problems here because uh, the stories somewhere else are, you know, they're not even helping the juniors because they're afraid that they will take over their job in the future and stuff like that. I mean, this is totally wrong. And yeah, in the company, try to build a culture where everyone is encouraged to help. And also find a way to praise and reward those who help a lot. So if you see a guy who's actually working all the time on the project, but you can see that he's spending, you know, his time uh, going around desks and helping other people. You know, we have to find a way to praise and reward them, whatever that way is. I'm not uh, going into details, uh, but yeah, find. And of course, mentor new mentors. This is really important because mentor, being a mentor is not, you know, not easy and it's not natural to be just everyone can be mentor. It's not that easy. So uh, mentor new mentors means that if you are in a situation currently, I don't know if you are a senior developer, maybe already taking care of a couple of junior developers, mentoring them, find some meet to senior developers who will be able to, you know, do the same thing in the future and maybe ask them over, help them what you're doing, uh, they will hear you, they will see what you're doing, they will, um, they will be able to learn about the, um, the things you do. And the result, I mean, at least in our company, uh, over the last seven years, we hired 100 plus developers. And at our peak, we had six people doing the onboarding project at the same time. So it was really an internal Drupal workshop during their job time. You know, they, they, they came to our company in the span of month, month and a half. So yeah, some of them were already a, a little in front. But what, what happened was that those who were there for a month helped the new ones on the first task, you know, because they already made them. They, 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 and they were proud and they were happy that they were able to help. So this is how you, how you try to build. Uh, we started Drupal workshops in 2017, and we had 22 Drupal workshops already in our country. So this is what, six, six years now. Um, and 
from the first, we, we have an employee who joined, a girl who joined uh, the first Drupal workshop in 2017 and is still an employee today. Uh, actually, we, we, I think usually it's about 10 to 15 people. Uh, we just gather them, usually it's one day uh, or two Saturdays or something like that. So we really do from 8 for, or 9 a.m. To, to 3, 4 p.m. and we just go over the Drupal basics. And then we see a talent, we see that someone is really, you know, interested and that he understands thing, things. And yeah, this is how we actually uh, got her and she's still... And of course, after her, there were a couple of them as well. PHP Masterclass, again, a, a workshop that we organized was a little wider, but then, you know, we go to Drupal. Uh, and then we are also organizing meetups in our office, Drupal Symphony as well, and PHP, and other events. Job Fair is an event in our university once per year, somewhere in spring, where the, the final year's students are able, you know, to meet uh, with the companies. Uh, so, yeah, that's it. Uh, this is the slide. So, yeah, this is actually the slide that was, like... So, uh, not, I would not say mandatory, but it was suggested to edit at the end of the, uh, your presentation. But really, uh, those of you who are developers, it's really connected to this session because, yeah, if you haven't contributed yet, these are the, these are the opportunities. Uh, because I know that at the beginning it's always hard and you always feel that you don't know enough and you always feel that all those guys are too smart for me, which in reality is usually not the case because quite quick you can solve an issue or two. Uh, so, yeah, this is also a slide for feedback in the mobile app. You can uh, put the feedback and this is a thank you from my side and if you have any questions. Um, hello. Um, there's been two questions, um, uh -huh. both asking the same. Um, basically, is your dummy onboarding project available anywhere or open source? Uh, no, uh, not, but uh, I mean, we could do this. Yeah, I mean, it's at the beginning, it was a little, we were a little bit, uh, you know, it was a little of our secret, but it's, it's, it's not a big deal. It's, it's just a dummy project with, with the tasks. I mean, it's, it's trying to simulate the real life project, trying to simulate, uh, but of course, going through all, the, um, through all the aspects of Drupal. But yeah, maybe, um, I mean, at the moment it's not, but I think we can think about and, and put, put something out. Okay. Cool. Any other questions? And thank you again. Thank you.